This is a new super I put on to the hive two weeks ago now. And I'm just checking to see whether the bees have um, drawn out the frames um, ready to put honey. And if I show you down, first of all, inside the box, you can see that's a queen excluder. And then here, uh, the bees have very well um, sorry, been trying to sting me there. Sorry, the bees have uh, drawn that um, wax out beautifully and made some really nice comb there. And the bees all look nice and healthy. And these are all worker bees. The queen is down there below the queen that's glued. Um, the worker bees can get through the grid, but the queen bee, because she's larger, cannot get through the grid. So I just place that frame back in. And a little bit of space. And we'll just check one more of these. So they, they're drawing these um, wax foundation frames that we put on two weeks ago very nicely now, um, which is what I expected. There's lots and lots of bees on here so you get the light to shine there and they've beautifully drawn this um, comb out these bees um, looking really nice and healthy so I'm very happy with that I expect that we'll soon start to get some honey uh, or first of all nectar um, deposited in these beautiful um, comb um, cells that they've made and um, then once they dehydrate that and cap it off it'll be ready to make some lovely bucket bees honey. So I've seen enough in this hive I'm just gonna put the frames back where they were I can tell exactly where they were because um, Propolis marks. You can see they've left propolis marks there, where the, which is like bee glue. It's made from bee tree resins and sap. And I'm spacing these frames very carefully um, because um, I only put nine frames in a honey super instead of ten and it allows them slightly more gap so we can get a thick frame of honey. As you see here in this upper um, chamber that they've got some honey. In fact, let me lift this one up and I'll show you what a frame of capped honey looks like. So here we are looking at that same frame that we just looked at this middle box just here, um, which was put on two weeks ago. The queen excluder is this metal bar just here. This is the new super, and this one is an older super, which has got some more established honey in. And so I've done what I call it, under supering. Encourage the bees to come past this new super and put the honey on the top there. And so let's have a look at one of these frames and see if, um, if I can show you what some capped honey looks like. Uh, these um, CD cases, uh, just catching small hive beetles if I can just zoom in here you can see there's a few small hive beetles in this um, um, hive and not so much over here they're being managed very well at the moment um, but they can cause major problems as a pest so I'm going to just first of all take this frame out and I have to put the camera down I can, can uh, uh, unable at the moment to um, hold the camera and lift a frame out um, from the edge there. Once I've lifted a frame out from the edge, we can move a couple across and I can show you what a, um, a, um, a frame full of capped honey looks like. Okay, I was just gonna say that this is uh, one of my gentle hives. Um, some of my hives are a little bit more 
um, defensive, I should say, rather than aggressive, but this is a hive of gentle bees. I have given them a tiny, tiny bit of smoke just to keep them calm. This is right at the top of the three boxes. There's more worker bees, uh, nurse bees looking after the brood right in the bottom box. So we're right up at the top here now. Um, it's um, Although it's winter, uh, we're in Queensland and um, so while it's unadvisable to open beehives to inspect during cold weather so the brood doesn't get chilled, um, it's a nice warm late morning here and uh, the temperature's um, um, just getting up to the mid-twenties now. So I've just loosened this first frame, we lift this one up and out, you can see the bees have started working on it. And they have um, drawn, this is what the foundation looks like when it first goes into the frame and as we move across you can see that it changes and they've started to do what we call drawing out the foundation uh, on both sides and just here actually, I don't know if you can pick the, uh, the, the glistening, um, they've begun to put a little bit of um, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it began to put a bit of nectar in there. So that's um, the frame nearer the edge, which has gone in very recently as well. And now if I start to just loosen these frames off a little bit with my hive tool, um, we can have a look and see if this next frame has a little bit more honey which is capped and I can tell immediately that it's more honey in here because it's heavier and um, there's a very small amount of capped honey and then all of this beautiful glistening honey, uh, nectar rather, is just being prepared by the bees. So you can see the next frame along and that's common to see them at the nearer the center of the hive you get, uh, the, the more the bees have been working. So a beautiful frame of nectar which is currently being prepared into honey and I'm going to smoke the bees now I'll show you something I can tell by their sound they're beginning to get a little bit irritated with me and also um, you can see the bees are all lining up and watching what I'm doing now we give them a tiny bit of smoke just enough to send them off onto their way and stop taking so much interest in me and then we can have a look at the next frame which the third frame along here I expect to be more capped honey and I can usually tell as soon as I pick it up because it's it's a lot heavier um, so we're going to take this frame up now gently lift it up and yep yeah, it's a nice heavy frame and again full of nectar a little bit of, and we can see a lot of capped honey here it's not capped at the bottom but they're beginning to prepare this nicely so this this uh, this honey hive here that I'm looking at is doing very well I'm pleased with the progress I know the Queen's doing well in this hive I inspected the brood chamber a week ago there's no reason for me to have any concerns. Um, so I'll just gently space those frames out evenly. If you don't get the frames evenly spaced, the bees start to um, build cross comb or burr comb and um, that then becomes a problem. Um, to manage. And certainly um, in the honey super but also in the in the brew chamber so we'll just put that final frame in. I always put the frames back in exactly the same order um, and we can put the lid on um, that um, hive now and those bees have been nice and calm for me today. I'm really yeah. pleased with that. It's been very easy um, hive inspection. That's all I needed to do. I needed to look into this middle box, the bottom box where the brood is, I'm happy with. Middle box, uh, which was just plain foundation. 
uh, not at all drawn out two weeks ago is now being drawn out very nicely the bees aren't being fed um, and the top box has got lots of honey in which is being capped so um, <coughs> the reason I say the bees aren't being fed some beekeepers feed sugar water um, at, at when there's no nectar flow on there's no pollen and nectar coming on just to give the bees energy but while we're trying to produce honey uh, it's really important not to feed the bees with syrup because they'll just put that syrup into the um, into the comb and dehydrate it and what we get is not real honey so it's uh, important the bees aren't being fed and they're looking very healthy and I'm pleased with that hive inspection so now I'm just tying it up with one of these straps um, people have asked me before, I don't know if I've mentioned in these videos before, that, that people have asked me what the point of strapping these up. I like because the bees glue the boxes together. In fact, when you want to do an inspection and you separate the uh, boxes, with uh, the bees have stuck the boxes together and sealed it up with propolis and there's a, a definite crack as you hear the propolis break. But we live out on a, a property here. There's our house and the driveways at the end there and we have got fields and paddocks and forage all around and there's another paddock far away there and we get lots of kangaroos and also our horses come into the garden paddock sometimes and if they were to knock one of the hives over um, then the idea is that the, um, the straps keep the, the hive together without uh, too much spillage of frames and, and, and kind of things so it's just a, an insurance and also in a high wind as well just keeps the hives together if they were to so I just want to have a look at this next hive um, because when I last looked I couldn't easily see eggs I could see brood um, and plenty of bees in there but I couldn't see any eggs and I like to be able to when I'm doing an inspection see eggs which means the queen has been there within the last three days at least so this hive I put a brick on the top just to remind me there was this is the one that uh, I wanted to have a careful look at next time I did an inspection so we'll have a pop the top off take the honey super off and have a look in the brood chamber just see if we can find some sign that the queen is still doing well off of, um, this hive this is a double hive um, so brood is down at the bottom here, I'm standing behind the hive for uh, defensive hives so as not to uh, stir them up too much, I've given them some smoke. This top box, again nine frames because it's the honey super, I've just gone through each of those frames. One to make sure there's no brood, there's no laying workers or no chance the queen has got above the brood excluder and also to check the honey and there's um, they've built most of the, drawn out most of the comb in here. There's plenty of honey, a lot of it's capped. There's about three frames that they are um, beginning to draw out. So once that a bit more drawn out, I shall put another super on top of the brood excluder, bring this one on top of that and they can start, um, they can start to draw that out and keep some honey in there. So I'm expecting a fairly good crop of honey this spring. Um, these bees are getting a little bit um, um, antsy with me already so I'm going to go with another little bit of smoke and I'm going to take off of the, the take this honey super off and have a look in the brew chamber and make sure I can see evidence of so I've got the honey super off that's sitting on the upturned lid and here is you can see where the brood is going to be because there's a ball of bees where the nurse bees are protecting the brood in there and then a bit of smoke before I take this food excluder off just to dissipate the bees and calm them down a little bit. As I say, some hives are more, um, I don't want to say aggressive there because it's defensive. I'm at the moment ripping away their hive and so it's not entirely um, unexpected that they will get a little bit cranky with me um, th because this hive is a little bit more on the um, unpleasant side to work with I will I intend to put a new queen in here anyway uh, buy a new queen with um, uh, a calmer disposition and of course as she then lays out eggs um, then uh, the offspring um, should be calmer too so we'll just take off this um, and you hear the crack of the propolis there, brood excluder, 
put that gently down on the side there and we'll see um, we'll move one of the frames from the edge so um, explore here now because this is a brood chamber i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten frames in here i want them packed together this isn't where i want them to do lots of uh, cross comb in between the frames which makes inspecting them fairly difficult what I've done there is um, I found I couldn't see the queen unfortunately uh, although I know she's in there because there are eggs and a very small uh, young larva which is good uh, it's absolutely packed full of bees in there so what I'm going to do is um, put another super on uh, at the edges just here and here were well, two frames full of honey. You can see here this uh, capped honey um, and no room for brood there. So I've shook the bees off into the hive. I'll put those honey frames into the honey super, which, and I've put two uh, new foundation um, frames in the brood box to allow a little bit more room uh, for them to draw out frame to um, put brood in in the centre here rather than at the edges where they're more likely to get me. And it's so packed now, I'm going to put another I'm going to put the, uh, brood excluder on, I'm going to put another honey super on with a clean foundation, and then we'll close this one. So I'm pleased this hive was uh, giving me a lot of concern, and uh, now I'm very happy to say. I know the queens do well, they produce a lot of honey and I can tell you they are quite defensive. I've just been stung on the finger and where these nitrile gloves uh, um, they don't tend to sting through one of them just stings so the thing to do with these things is get the stinger out straight away and then you put on to get rid of the finger and they leave their sting and they leave the pheromone which puts the other bees on the attack. You might be able to see they're flying around a bit excited, so I'm we'll using the smoke and back to I've just gone to the shed and got a new box uh, with um, frames and foundation. It's always important when you're a beekeeper to have spare equipment for these kind of um, uh, eventualities. So I've got the brood box at the bottom that I'm now happy that I've got queen in and a couple of new frames for the queen to lay eggs into. So to start creating swarm cells. It's early in the year, it's still winter, but I did see a case of a swarm that was captured in the Gold Coast, which is a few hours further south of us, so cooler uh, weather, so you have to be prepared really. So I've given them some more space in the brood box at the bottom. I'll put this new honey uh, super on the, as, which will now be the middle box. I'm going to put that under this honey super that we know has got lots of honey in. And um, trying something new here just to save on foundation, and it was an idea um, or a suggestion from one of my friends, Jake, who's a beekeeper, uh, in that I have got uh, frames with only partial, they're wired as usual, um, and the um, wax is embedded into the, um, the top. Um, uh, part of the wires and then the bottom is empty and so alternate frames are half um, um, foundation um, alternating with full foundation and the idea there is the bees will draw out that foundation by them naturally into the wire hopefully so that it doesn't fling off when it goes into the honey extractor so uh, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, evenly spaced, and now I'm going to put the um, uh, honey super back on top and close this eyes uh, and there is bees everywhere. And there you go, that's that hive then. So um, amazing hobby beekeeping. I've gone from uh, last time I looked in this hive feeling concerned about it, that it may be queenless, to today confirming um, even though I didn't see the queen I've seen that evidence that the queen is in there and I've given more room in the bottom box for the queen to lay um, and we've put a middle box a new super with clean fresh foundation and we've moved the, the existing honey super to the top box there so we've now got uh, potential for two full deep boxes honey 
um, and uh, plenty of room for the queen to lay the brood to continue um, that hive um, with a good strong workforce. So you can see now I've stirred the, the bees up. I've, um, I've had a look in this hive. This hive is my weakest hive. Having said that, there's lots of bees in there, but they still do have room to expand a little bit before I put another super, a honey super above the queen excluder there. And then these two hives, I haven't been in today, these two hives actually have got double brood boxes under single honey supers. Uh, so what um, I will probably do with those <coughs> when the time is right is split them literally uh, the lower two boxes on each hive to make um, so what we'll go is from um, two um, double brood boxes to four single brood boxes and they'll get honey supers on so I'll in fact gain two new beehives. Uh, these, these hives uh, haven't been touched today you can see that they are relatively stirred up the signal pheromones from the other bees that are in a, a bit of a cranky mood now and so they're all stirred up as well. So now time for me to retreat, let them get back to their own thing and, and calm down now.